Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to generate DLL from MATLAB and integrate it to a C++ environment in Visual Studio. To make your life easier, you can find any websites or code you see in the video in the description down below. First of all, download MATLAB Runtime in case you don't have it already. Then go to Windows Environment Variable, set the address of MATLAB Runtime Win64 folder to your path. It should be something like MATLAB, MATLAB Runtime V version number runtime being 64 then restart your computer in the MATLAB for demonstration purpose I made a simple function which can return the average of input array and my goal is to generate DIL for this function and integrate to my C++ program to do that we need to type this line of command in the command window where the name of the cpplib is the name of the library. In this case, I'm gonna name it as avgfunclib. After liglib, that's the name of the MATLAB function. Here is avgfunc.m. Hit enter, then you will see a bunch of files are generated. But among those, three most important files are the lib, the dll, and the header file. In the Visual Studio, create an empty project. Give a name and save the project in the same folder as those MATLAB files. My project name is AVGBRJ, Average Project. Next, under Source Files folder and the new CPP file. If you want to try it yourself, again, you can copy paste the code for my GitHub link in the description. I will go through the code and run it, but before that, we need to do something else. Go to the Visual Studio Project folder and create a new folder called Resources. Copy paste DRL, Edge, Lib, the three files I say are important to this folder. Also, copy them to where the main CPP is. Add the DRL and the lib file to the resources folder, like that. Right click the project file, go to property. Under VC++ directory, include the arteries. Copy paste the path of your MATLAB runtime include folder to here for the library directory and the path to the main 6 for Microsoft and the path to the resources folder Next, under linker, input additional dependency. You want to type the name of these two lib files to here. The first lib is simply the lib that you just generated. Finally, go to linker general, additional library directory. Again, put down the path of the resources folder. Click OK, apply OK, then restart the Visual Studio. Right-click project file, then click build. You should see it once it's it, zero file, zero update, zero skip. In this case, I already built once, so it says zero to see zero file one update, which is also fine. Note: sometimes you may encounter an error that says something like access violation. It's not really an error. We don't need to worry about that. But if that stops the program execution, then we can go to Debug, Windows, Exception Settings, and uncheck the access violation. Basically, this program reads a data file that has 5 columns of numeric data, 
and the DLL will calculate the mean of each line of the data file, then output the result to the Windows console. So now let me go through the C++ program so you can have a better understanding of what is going on. First, don't forget to include the header file. I didn't expand the header files folder when I record the video, but the header file is actually there. You can end the header file the same way you did for the DL and lib. Under the main, you will always want to include these two if statements. What they do is to wake up my lab runtime and getting files and libraries ready. Next, we open the data files, and that's the part of data files, my data.txt. Then I define a string, a string array, and a double array. By using getLive with string string, I'm able to array the data files line by line, then store each line into a string array. After that, I convert each element in the string array to a double, and save them into a double array. Then I create a 1.5 array buffer object, D, to store data from the double array for input. Note that N is 5, because that's the number of columns in a data file, and each line is one dimension. If you have never heard of MW array or MX double, those kind of things, no worries. For now, you can treat them as a data type that can be understood for both C and MATLAB. It's actually an API. For more information and their syntax, you can refer to the link down below. So I pass the value in the new data array to the input buffer array, D. Then we can call the MATLAB function we wrote at the beginning of the video. The first argument is the number of output, which is 1. The second argument is the output array to actually store output data. And the third one is D, which is the input buffer array. Finally, we use getData function to get a result print them to the Windows console, pause for 0.5 seconds. All of them are in a while loop, so it calculates the average of each line. At the very end is the termination process, just like we have the initialization at the top. I recommend to have a look of their documents, otherwise the code can be confusing, I know. Also adjust the speed. It's 0.5 seconds by default, but you can do one seconds, two seconds, whatever. It's worth to mention that we have the executable in the debug folder. Copy the DLL to here, then you can run the executable directly. You can send the resources folder, which is including the header files, the lib, and the DLL to other users. Even if they don't have the MATLAB license, they just need to install MATLAB runtime for free and configure the Visual Studio as I shown then they are good to go. Or perhaps they just want the executable, then you can send the executable along with the DLL to them. I hope this video is helpful. If you like it, please give me a like. Thank you.